Drill Sergeant. Drill number six. Another nugget for a fiery trial. It's cavalry, not rivalry. A jewel being collected by God. Again, it's cavalry, not rivalry. Since we're in a warfare, you will have to face the enemy through a family situation, a financial situation, through flesh, or through something. You will have to face enemy attack even when the devil is a defeated foe. And that's the thing that I want to impress upon you. We have a whole generation growing up saying they can push the devil around. It is true that you can bind spirits in the name of Jesus, but you had better not be on their territory. You don't push the devil around lightly while you are clogged up with bitterness, unforgiveness, backbiting, and jealousy. When you're clogged in the soul area, you are a prey for the enemy onslaughts. I'm going to say that again. When you are clogged in your soul area, you are a prey for the enemy onslaughts. You may shout, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, there is power. Sometimes the enemy is coming against you and upsetting your home or a meeting because there is ground. Ephesians 4, 27. Sometimes he takes over our meetings and we don't even recognize him. We allow him to do his religious thing. There are many religious spirits. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I have seen people think it was the Holy Spirit when it was a demon spirit taking over the worship service. It's Calvary, not rivalry. All of our victory, all of our authority is rooted in the work of Christ, in his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. The only reason the devil pays attention to us is the fact that we are in Christ. It's Calvary in the face of enemy power. And the devil hates this truth. In Romans chapter 6, when the devil makes havoc and mince meat out of situations, and you need to exercise your authority, just go back to the cross, which is the source of our power. There is inherent power in the word of God. But the Lord says, I'll teach my end time army how to use the word. You don't say, I know how to work it, God. You just take the anointed word of God and yield your entire being to the Holy Spirit in total dependence upon him. He will wield the command of faith against the subtle onslaught of the enemy. Remember, it's the word of the Spirit. We take things too lightly. No one wants to repent. No one wants to be revived. Sometimes we don't want to get rid of the garbage. God says, I'm calling for a holy people. When you are holy people, as the word rolls out of your mouth to command the devil, he will not only see me or whoever you are, but he will see Jesus in you. And when the faith command is given, the demons have to flee because it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And they hate that. There are a lot of people who need to be unclogged. The Holy Spirit wants to break through in any battle, whether Satan or the flesh, 
Take yourself back to the cross. You can use your faith for healing, for families to be reunited, or for salvation. Would you use your faith to walk in anointed Holy Ghost power? God hates flesh. Flesh will not war in this end time revival. No flesh will profit. While this may sound strange, it is true. When the Lord began to show me some things about being in the end time army and the price to be paid, he said the price is yourself. I don't use any flesh. In the end time, when I pour out my latter rain, I won't pour it upon flesh. If you plan to hold on to any self that is your way, your rights, etc., but you won't flow in the power of the resurrection. He told me, Barbara, it's up to you. I don't force anyone to walk this way. It's a deliberate choice. If you want to be in my end time army, you can choose the way of the cross or the way of the self life. It's your life reigning or either mine is reigning. In the middle of the fiery trials, you need to know how to walk the way of the cross. The way of the cross says no to my self life and yes to the power of the resurrected life of Jesus living in me. So you will go back to the cross and say, when Christ died, I died. According to Romans 6, I do this sometimes every day. I say, Father, this morning I choose to identify with your son. Barbara died 2,000 years ago when you hung on that cross. Therefore, since she died, I don't want her resurrected today. I thank you, Romans 6 and 14 says, that sin shall not have dominion over me because I'm dead. So then when the telephone rings and someone wants to gossip, I say, I'm dead. Romans 6 and 6 says, knowing this, that your old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. And verse 11 says, Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead, indeed into sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm a new creation, woman, and I have within me everything I need to walk in the Spirit. In the new creation, I'm a partaker of the divine nature. Old things are passed away. God is wooing us to live out of the new. We have a divine inheritance according to Ephesians 1 and 18. If we reckon on the fact that when Jesus died, we died, that will take care of a lot of things. I'm not to talk back to my husband in an ugly tone when he irritates me. A soft answer turns away wrath. I don't have to live out of the old. I'm tired of living out of the garbage. Jesus wants to live through me. I want him to take that new creation reality and walk it out through my personality. You died. But don't let people see you dying and smelling. Let them see the resurrection life. Let people see the life of Jesus in you. When Christ died and was buried, by faith we were buried too. When he went to Sheol, the grave, and hell, when he descended into the lower parts of the earth, by faith we were in him too. When he bruised Satan's head, took the keys of death and hell, disarmed principalities and power, we were in him by faith. His victory is our victory. When he rose from the grave, 
we arose with him and walked in newness of life. We are new creation people. We are more than conquerors. We also ascended with him. We are alive. We are life givers. We are peacemakers. We are joy spreaders. We are the salt of the earth. Every place we go, someone should know that Jesus is alive in us. We are seated in heavenly places in him. Far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, identify with what Jesus has done for you. Stop striving, struggling, and straining to exercise your throne rights in the energy of the flesh. Rely, relax and rejoice in the victory of the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Another nugget of gold for fiery trials. It's Calvary, not rivalry. Drill Sergeant.